Hey, Grade 8. Today we're going to talk about the cell and its structures. We're going to talk a little bit about both animal cells and plant cells. So this is kind of an introduction to um, looking at individual cells and the parts that are inside of them that we call organelles. This is something that you will continue into Grade 10 and then also biology in high school. So first of all, let's just kind of like, again, visit this difference between unicellular, which means it's made of only one cell. So this would be a single-celled organism. So something like this is like plankton is what we're looking at at the top left there uh, versus something that's multicellular so made up of more than one cell so there you're seeing uh, some kind of algae or something I'm not sure okay anyways but you can tell this is made up of more than one cell and this is made up of one cell so uni uh, means one right so when you talk about a unicycle uni is one um, you know so unicycle is one tire while multi is more than one so important definitions. Here's some other examples for us to look at. So here's a unicellular protozoa. So it has only one cell. That's the whole organism, what you're seeing right there. But of course, a caterpillar is, is more than one cell. You got lots of cells in here. Oh, this is an amoeba. Amoebas are neat. They kind of move around by almost making this like foot thing that then they push out and then in, push out and in. But there's a single-celled amoeba. A dog is made up of more than one cell, so it's multicellular. What about a cow? Is it unicellular or multicellular? What do you think? What about this thing? Whatever it is, unicellular or multicellular, based on what you're seeing there. Okay, so we are going to get into now the organelles inside of cells. Uh, we're actually just going to cover a few of the organelles. This is not all of them. Uh, in fact, even in Science 10, you're not going to learn all of them. You're just going to learn uh, some select ones that are viewed as most important. But we're going to go through uh, some really important ones here, a few of them, and then use that to actually contrast the differences between animal cells and plant cells. So what is an organelle? Well, an organelle is a structure inside the cell that performs a certain function. And you need to know what the names and functions are of the organelles that we go through today. So you actually have to know quite a bit. You both have to be able to point to a cell and be like, hey, this is this. And you also have to tell what the function is of that organelle. So in basic terms, what that thing does. So we're gonna start off by talking about the cell membrane. Cell membranes are found in both plant and animal cells. And cell membranes are kind of the outside here, okay? Uh, you can think of it kind of like the skin of the, the cell. And what a cell membrane does is it allows the inside of the cell to be different than the outside of the cell in its composition. So it basically um, regulates and controls what goes in, what goes out of the cell. It allows some things to get through while other things can't. Uh, we call that semi-permeable, okay? The membrane, the cell membrane allows some things through and some things not. Um, but yeah, and that allows the inside and the outside of a cell to be different in its composition. Uh, by allowing some things in and some things out and other things can't get through. So that's the cell membrane. And again, it's the outside of these cells. And you can see it in both the plant cell and the animal cell. We have a membrane on the outside. So that's the first one. The next thing that we're going to talk about is what we call the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm is actually just kind of like the broth or the jelly that suspends everything else. There's kind of like some fibers in the cytoplasm that help keep things in place, but it's a jelly-like fluid that suspends the other organelles. So it's just like all this stuff. Um, have you ever seen like those really disgusting uh, like jello salads? Like my grandma used to make this all the time, where it was a bunch of like carrot bits and maybe pineapple inside of jello okay the jello is like the cytoplasm and then the carrots and the pineapple that's like the organelles if you've never had that like good for you that's fantastic because it's just kind of weird anyways uh, cytoplasm is a jelly-like fluid that suspends the organelles it's constantly moving throughout the cell so um like the cytoplasm is shifting and there's movements and stuff and that allows things like food oxygen waste 
to move to where it needs to go inside of the cell. So for example, if a cell takes in nutrients or food from its membrane, well then that's moving through the cytoplasm to where it needs to go. In the same way, if waste is leaving somewhere in the cell, then it is moving through the cytoplasm to the membrane so it can leave the cell and go somewhere else. Uh, and it just supports everything in the cell. So it's kind of like this um, medium for stuff to move through and also to just kind of keep the organelles in place so they can do what they do. So here it's pointing to cytoplasm. I actually am not sure if I love where this arrow is pointing to. I would prefer if it actually pointed to uh, the darker matter around here because I actually feel like this might be pointing to a vacuole. But that doesn't matter much. What's important here is that we know this is pointing to just the stuff that everything else is suspended in. Um, yeah. Okay, so the nucleus controls the activities of the cell. This is where the genetic material is, uh, like the chromosomes for the cell. So all of the genetic code, that's basically the blueprints for how to make everything in the organism, yeah, is held within the nucleus. So the nucleus is essentially really just uh, the genetic code, the DNA of the organism is held within the nucleus and every cell will have a nucleus. Now, all of this genetic material is held by a nuclear membrane. So just like the cell itself has a membrane on the outside that allows you know stuff to stay in, other stuff to stay out. Well, same thing here. On the nucleus, there is a membrane that surrounds it that keeps the genetic material inside of the nucleus and regulates what goes into and out of the nucleus itself. But yeah, this is like the control center of the cell, okay? This is like the, the city hall of the cell. Uh, it's, it's what controls everything else by having that genetic material, the master plan for the organism. Vacuoles. Vacuoles are for storage. And you'll see here what I said about cytoplasm and the fact that this arrow is pointing to exactly where the cytoplasm was pointing uh, in that slide. So vacuoles are these membrane bound um, kind of large containers in the plant cell. Uh, and they're smaller in the animal cell. Normally plant cells have one large vacuole. They could have more, but normally there's one large vacuole in a plant cell that holds a lot of like water, uh, but it's for holding food, nutrients, waste, that sort of stuff. Think about it kind of like a closet. Okay, so it just is storage. It just holds stuff. Um, so this also is membrane bound and that keeps the inside of what's in the vacuole different from the rest of the cytoplasm and what's on the outside of the cytoplasm. And uh, again, like I said, in large, in plants, there is a large central vacuole while animals have many smaller vacuoles. Sorry, I'll just move this to the next line so you can see it. Uh, so animals have many small vacuoles while in plants, again, we have one large central vacuole. So here you're seeing the first difference between plant cells and animal cells you can use to actually identify which you have, which is which. All right, cell wall. This is plant cells only. Cell walls provide structure to plant cells and they're basically like this cellulose layer on the outside. So they're thicker, more rigid than a cell membrane. They don't regulate what goes in and out. It is again for structure to help keep the shape of the, the cell itself. Um, again, it's called a, uh, it's made of a tough material called cellulose and it's like a skeleton. So it is support. You think about it almost like an exoskeleton for the cell. So, I mean, if you think about plants, plants don't have a skeleton inside of them, right? Instead, what happens is all the cells actually have these cell walls in a plant and that's what gives it its rigidity. Its structure are these cell walls within plant cells. And again, this is only in plant cells. We do not find cell walls in animal cells. Chloroplasts are also only in plant cells, and this is the site of photosynthesis. So you should have learned about photosynthesis last year, right? Um, when you learned about plants for foods and fiber in grade seven. But in plant cells, we have these chloroplasts, which basically capture sunlight. They take carbon dioxide, okay, that comes from the air and then eventually makes it into the plant cell and they take water, and then from there, they end up making sugar and oxygen out of those supplies. So by taking carbon dioxide and water, and then energy from sunlight or from light, then they can convert that in the chloroplast into sugars, which is food for the plant, food for us, 
and oxygen, which gets released from the plant. Uh, so this is, again, the organelle where photosynthesis takes place. Inside of chloroplasts, we have something called chlorophyll, which is the pigment uh, that actually captures the sunlight. So chlorophyll is what gives plants its green color, and chlorophyll is green. Um, it is within chloroplasts, okay, and that captures the sunlight. What's interesting about the fact that it's green is that means that is the uh, type of light that does not get absorbed by the chloroplasts. So uh, when you look at what light plants absorb, they actually absorb the spectrum except for the green. They don't absorb green light. So if you actually had a plant and you showed that plant only green light, that plant would not do very well because it cannot capture that green light with the chloroplasts to go through photosynthesis. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So uh, mitochondria kind of looks like a weird jelly bean, um, but mitochondria is where cellular respiration occurs. So this is where sugars react with oxygen to make carbon dioxide, water, and cellular energy. Uh, so cellular energy is energy that actually can be used by other organelles in the cell. It is uh, what actually allows us to do things. It's actually called ATP cellular energy, and that's made in the mitochondria. Uh, mitochondria is super interesting in that it used to actually be like its own independent cell and then it got incorporated into cells. Uh, if you want to read some interesting stuff, read about the mitochondria. Uh, mitochondrial DNA is absolutely fascinating because your DNA and your mitochondria will be the exact same as your mom's mitochondrial DNA because there's actually DNA inside of the mitochondria itself. It's a whole thing. Anyways, um, super interesting, but what you need to know is that the mitochondria is the power plant or the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, so that's where sugar fuel is turned into energy that the cell can use. Okay, cellular energy. So that's what you need to know. And again, it looks like a weird jelly bean and you're gonna see uh, another picture of this in just a bit. So that's the organelles. Those are all the organelles that you need to know. Uh, another thing is that you should understand what's happening when things get bigger. When things get bigger, multicellular organisms, not unicellular, but multicellular organisms like you, or let's say, you know, a dog or a cat or whatever, when it's getting bigger, what's actually happening is the cells themselves aren't getting bigger, but more cells are being made. So cells end up splitting to make more cells, right? And this process is something called mitosis. You're going to learn about it next year. Um, but they divide to make more cells and more cells and more cells, and that's how uh, organisms get bigger. What's interesting is even in you, you are not the same person you were, both <laughs> literally and metaphorically, and that actually the cells that you began with for the most part have been replaced by new cells. Okay, so you are constantly replacing cells in your body all the time by... Uh, cells splitting to make new cells and then old cells dying off and, you know, getting used up or recycled or whatever by your body. Um, if you want to see something interesting, just take a look at how often parts of your body actually end up getting completely refreshed by new cells being made. I'll see if I can find a video. Okay, uh, that's it. That's all we're going through. The rest is just kind of other stuff. So hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you understand the organelles. We're going to do some other extra activities and practice on this over the next few days, but really important that you know what all those organelles are, uh, that you can identify them, and you know what they do. I'm going to actually go back to this diagram because it's a really good one, uh, laying out some stuff, and let's talk about what is what on these diagrams. Now, we're not going to label all these things because we don't care about all these things. Uh, we just care about some of them that we learned about. Now, if we take a look at this big thing right here, what do you think that is? Well, that's the nucleus. So this is the nucleus of the cell. This is a plant cell and this is an animal cell. So here we have the nucleus. Uh, and then on the outside, that would be the nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope. Okay. Um, and that keeps the nucleus inside bits, the genetic material, away from the outside environment. Okay, and this weird jelly bean looking thing here, number eight and number four here. So, brah, brah. what do you think that is? This is the mitochondria. So, the power house of the cell, the power plant. This is converting sugars into cellular energy. So, here's another one right here. 
right? You can see. What's this green thing that we have here? This is chloroplast. So this is the site of photosynthesis. And uh, the green color is due to the pigment of chlorophyll. But this is how plant cells, and it's only in plant cells, uh, end up making food from sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. What's this right here? Well, this is a vacuole. Okay, so a membrane bound sac for storage. This is a plant cell. So you're seeing a very large central vacuole here. Uh, vacuole harder to see on this. Let's just call number two a vacuole. And we can see that we have something that's kind of membrane bound there, right? That's keeping stuff inside of it. Okay, what am I missing? Well, I'm missing the cell membrane, which is right here on the animal cell. And then on the plant cell, we can see it where we've cut away the cell wall, and that's the cell membrane right there. And then finally, this outside stuff that we can see, right? Outside, outside, right there. Well, that is the cell wall. And that's made of cellulose in the plant cell, and that gives it structure, okay? So it uh, allows it to retain shape. It's like the skeleton of the plant cells. All right, other stuff is here, but you don't have to know any of the other stuff. Okay, not at this level. If you want to know more, then uh, there's a great crash course on both plant cells and animal cells. It will give you a ton of information. One of the main things we focus on in grade 10 is actually how proteins get made in cells. So the whole process of that, uh, and that's kind of interesting to track how the cell, all the organelles kind of coordinate and cooperate to make proteins. Um, but yeah, at this level, you're just learning the basic basics of a few of the organelles, how to identify them, and what they do. All right, have a good rest of your day.